right. I don't think I need this. I'll keep this around for a bit. Let's see if everything looks good. Good. Yeah, I can hear myself twice. So I'm hoping that just works. Channel. I'm hoping that just works. Channel. I'm hoping that just works. Yeah. All right. So with that, I think it's all good. All right. So with that, I think it's. Again, I don't want to listen to myself, so I'm just going to close this now. Alright. Okay, let's get started. If, by the way, if you have any problems with the audio or anything, just let me know in the chat. I'll try to look here every once in a while to see if everything is still good. Um, but with that, I think I will get started. So, for this week at Bloomy, where I work, we have a hackathon week, so we can choose whatever we want to work on. And I wanted to start a new project where we implement our CodeGen tech for .NET using .NET. So right now we use Go to work with our CodeGen tooling for .NET, uh, but that has not ideal. Uh, it has been ideal to work with so i wanted to do that again starting from scratch see how far we can get in dotnet throughout the week so i'll be trying to stream what i'm doing from scratch and see how far we can go so with that i can just start a new project and start porting over what we have in pulumi in the cogen uh, in the cogen namespace in the cogen module and see how far we can go. Of course, I plan only to do, uh, only to target .NET, so I won't be caring about uh, language specifics for Node.js and Python and Java, etc., etc. The idea is that we implement uh, .NET support in .NET fully without having to rely on Go for uh, generating client SDKs and generating programs from Bloomy. So with that, I can just uh, go here, start from scratch if I can find where my home directory is okay uh, don't worry too much about this in the background I'll actually remove it here there you go I need to look at slack no need to look at this either okay so starting from scratch is cd into my projects and making a new directory and getting my phone out of the way so that it doesn't in interact or affect this. Okay, muted. I might actually use it later if the internet is bad. So I'll start a new project. Let's call it uh, Bloomy Cogen in .NET, specifically F Sharp. Um, but it can be used by .NET. So CD into that. A lot of Pulumi stuff. So Cogen .NET. Start up a new project. So let's start new file. Read me. Lumi Cogen in .NET. See, um, Copilot thinks thinks I'm already gonna write it in Go because a lot of because all of our Cogen tooling is written in Go, but that is not the case. I'm going for .NET, specifically using F# -sharp to do our schema parsing and hopefully do a bit of the SDK gen. I'll be talking a little bit uh, more about what that entails exactly as, as we go. But basically it all starts with being able to get a Bloomy schema, which describes what a Bloomy package, what resources a Bloomy package has and how it should be generated for any language. So take, so given a Bloomy schema, 
we take our uh, code gen tools and generate client SDKs for every supported language. Now the way we do it is we parse that package definition in Go and then start generating a project from that. However, the way that Go works with these schemas is uh, very tiresome because it, ha it works with types, it needs to do a lot of pattern matching on these types and to be honest Go is not the language to do it because uh, yeah, because of all the typecasting and not having discriminated unions. So, and also not having generics, at least uh, in the way we implemented it in Pulumi right now, because generics just came uh, a while back in Go, I think 1.18, but when Pulumi started writing the implementation, it was still using old Go code, which didn't have generics. So that's already two things that are always in the way when we write or work with Gen tooling. So the idea is uh, schema parsing, uh, schema parsing, uh, SDK generation, so client SDK generation. So we're going to write to try to write uh, SDK gen for C sharp. Right, maybe later for F for F sharp or maybe VB.net. I don't know, but uh, for now I'm just going to write what we try to port what we already have for C sharp from Go to F sharp to C sharp to generate C sharp code from F sharp. So I think that will be a bit more pleasant to work with. And later on, I want to attempt uh, BCL dot net generation so PCL is our Pulumi configuration language our internal language and we use PCL as an intermediate language to compile to multiple target languages PCL has the same issue where it it has it's a it's a programming language with its own AST and the types it gets it gets it from the schema so we need schema parsing for it um, but it's not nice to work with. I would, I would like to be able to model ECL with an F sharp discriminated union so that I can explain what expressions are and how to composite them or how to destructure them, etc. etc. And then it would be much nicer to work with when we uh, compile those to .NET. Uh, another issue for PCL is that the current way we do it in Pulumi, um, when we write out the types, when we write out the generated target language, we don't always have type information for everything we write. So if we have a list of something, we don't have the type information at the point where we're generating the list. I'll talk about that more in detail later when we get to it, because right now I think we're going to be to have our hands full with the schema parsing and the client SDK generation. There's a whole lot in here, so I won't be trying to implement everything from the get implement everything. I'm just trying to implement a subset of the schema and add more things as I go and see how uh, how we can generate more and more SDKs from that. So with that, I can get started. So I'll be, I'll go make directory Pulumi schema parser, or should it be Pulumi schema? Yeah, Pulumi schema sounds better. Uh, another directory for tests. So into Pulumi schema.net new library lang f sharp. .net new. Uh, what do you call it? Class library? Net new. Uh, it's just class lib, not class library. Okay, so dot net new class lib blank f sharp. Okay, there we have it. Tests will be a well a console app to be honest. New console blank f sharp. Console 
There we go. And then we're going to add a reference. Don't add a reference to balloon schema. There we go. We have two projects, the testing project and the schema is where we're going to define our parser types, the, the types and the parser and have some utility functions there. So code here, tests here, let's get on with it. I don't see the chat. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. How are you doing? Noel. I I'll remind myself to keep looking at the <laughs> at the chat every once in a while because I need to look into OBS. I don't know if I can just take this out. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so I'll just keep looking at here. Okay. Any, anyhow, okay, back to this one. So the library here will be uh, Lumi schema and at some point I will have a parser for it. But before writing out the parser, I need to define what a schema looks like. So a Lumi schema, I have a whole bunch of those in the Lumi repository. I don't look for this one. So if I go into our testing, I can see a whole bunch of those. So a Pulumi schema is basically something that looks like open API schema, but it's different because it has like Pulumi specifics, things like type being a plain type or a type that needs to be a secret, which are things are specific to Pulumi. It also has Pulumi specific types like assets, uh, assets and, and whatnot. So I will just, I will see how far I can go. The schema is pretty extensive, um, but I will see how far I can go with just as minimal as possible of the schema, right? So in testing, we have test data. These are all schemas. Uh, this is, for example, our AWS provider. It's a huge provider. Uh, it probably has all kinds of weirdness that I don't want to tackle right now but you can see it has like simple things like a name description some things about the git repository uh, where it gets it where it gets its configuration from and uh, the resources that have really long module names technically token type tokens but uh, we'll get into that so I'm not gonna look into AWS just yet, I will be looking into something more simple, like the random API. The random API is much simpler. Even Visual Studio Code is able to actually uh, parse it and have these things available. So the package or the, the schema has a name, description. It has resources, which are uh, one of the two most important things in here or maybe the most important thing here I think we will start by parsing resources in the schema which are which are basically a types but it's again Pulumi specific because Pulumi works with resources and the resource has description it has a type token which means uh, which says where it should live in the generated client SDK or basically it's a way to identify a resource but it also determines where that resource will live in the generated uh, SDK so for example if we have the package called random then the type token will start by the package name then the module it belongs to and then the name of the resource so index is a special module because it just means it belongs to the root package but it, if it was a different name here, then it would be like a sub-module for the generated SDK. So resources have their identifier, their type tokens, and then they have description properties, each of which have a type, which again, they look a lot like open API specs, but, but they're not, they're different. Because it also has input properties. So besides the properties of the resource itself, we can have 
input properties, which are different. There are different types of properties. There's also state inputs, which I am not going into uh, today. Because to be honest, I haven't worked with them that much. They're used for um, retrieving resources. So I'm not gonna. I'm not going to work with state inputs for now. I'm just going to try to parse resources with their type tokens and see what we can do from there. Yeah, again, input properties. Uh, it has this open API thing called ref, the same where you can reference a type. In this case, we are referencing Pulumi.json any, which is like object if we are if you're talking C sharp. Okay, so far so good. So the first thing I want to tackle, which is a bit low level, but this is kind of the very first thing I want to tackle, is how to parse these types. So we have a type that can be an integer, can be an object, can be a string, and it has more things around it, like a description and whether it was it is deprecated or not. Uh, but I just want to handle this, this, this part, right? So it ha so a type uh, also can be an array with items of strings, so it can be nested, so you can have array of array of strings. And I would like to handle that using a discriminated union. Also having an object type, an, ob an object type with additional properties, meaning that you have a dictionary similar to, again, open API, but just a, a tiny bit different. So with that, let's get into writing the code. I actually want to copy this into the bloomycogen.net in the tests. I'll paste it here, call it random so that I can uh, work against it. I think it even has a version, version so that if I, yeah, it has a version right here. Okay, so the library here, um, namespace sounds good to me. I'll start by uh, specifying a type which is the schema type uh, don't worry about the naming uh, I'm gonna try not to worry about it myself because I'm going to reiterate on this uh, quite a lot but I don't want the naming to get in the way so I will just go with whatever I have in mind and see how far I can go from there so schema type is can be either a string a, I think a number or integer. I'm not sure if the schema makes that distinction. I will check that in a bit. A, a boolean, an array of schema type. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Copilot. Again, object. Almost. Thank you, Copilot. Object of a map of string to. Yeah, that's. Uh, that sounds good, I think. Because if it's an object and it has properties, but properties is not necessarily just the name of the string. Uh, already getting into very interesting things. Okay, let's go again. Pulumi specific asset archive. Okay, so this is on its own and not enough. We'll need to define um, metadata about about the schema type, which is whether like its description, whether it's secret or not, whether it's inputy, whether it's plain or not. Actually, whether it's plain or not is going to be a specific type of the schema type. I think that makes it nice. Uh, require qualified access so that it makes so it, clear, it, it is clear what is what. Yeah, an object with the properties. Maybe 
maybe I should define it in a separate type. So properties will have type definition. So let's define a type definition. First of all, this is recursive because that makes it easy. I can make a recursive namespace and make it here. So a typed definition will be will have its own type, which is schema type, but also description uh, description yeah string option whether it's uh, deprecated or not. So deprecation message. Thank you. And whether it's secret or not. I think, I think this makes more sense. We have an object. So this is a type definition. Schema object type. Yeah, it even knows things about Bloomy specifics. It's good so far, object of bunch of types yeah that makes sense i also have a dictionary map of schema type assuming that the key of the map is always a string so these are the types we're working with these are the types that we're working with this is what i want to um, bars too. This is what I want to work with. Okay. If we look at the schema from here, we'll see it has a name and a description and resources. So let's start with that. I have the schema. It has a name, a string, a description string option it has resources which is a map of string to resource and resource have a bunch of things Oh, it... hmm. I don't know why Copilot thinks this is a good suggestion, but it did start good. It did start very good. Token. Token will be a string. I might need to make a specific type for the token, but that's okay for now. Description again, string option. Thank you. I did not think of that. Uh, some resources can be components, in which case, we do not need to uh, generate them. Input properties that is a very correct input properties, required inputs, and just properties. Something like that. Something like that. So this is modeling a bit of the schema. Okay, let's call this types. 
If you have any questions, just let me know, by the way. Types. I will add parser. I think I could go module types so that I can open it later and open the parser. This is module uh, Bloomy schema parser. Need to add it here, of course. For the parser, I'll be using a JSON parser. Um, I will not work with, at least for the time being, I will not worry too much about YAML. Uh, for now, everything is JSON. And that's good enough. Let me just make quick quickly if there's our integers. They're numbers too. I don't see type number. Let me see if the Bloomy schema defines it. Cogen schema schema types all the way up. I should see a bunch of them. Yeah, there's an integer type, a string type, an archive asset. There's also any, and there's JSON. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So JSON is not primitive. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll just I'll just go with I'll just go with what I have. The specifics, the details, it's all just details. That doesn't matter. There's a map type, which is what we have. There's an array type. I did have an array, right? Yeah, array of schema type. Yeah, that, that covers a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things. So that should that should be easy. All right, moving on to the actual parsing. So that let's see if we can get an actual schema from here. So cd bloomy schema. Going with Newton soft JSON, that's what I'm most familiar with, that's what I like to work with, especially their object model is a lot easier to work with than the DOM of system JSON. Uh, yeah, it's here, so parser. So parse JSON. Well, yeah, close enough. Open. Not like that. There you go. Open types. Open system. It is at JSON. Link. Yep. Parser, parse schema. JSON. I like to work with the I like to work with the object model, so I always work with JSON schema like this. So let's see. Uh, let me w uh, work with some kind of helper function. Uh, optional, optional text given a JSON. That is very nice, thank you. Optional text, uh, text. And these don't need to be exposed outside, so. Private, private. 
uh, light schema, path type schema. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't need the type, right? Uh, the name. Yeah, there you go. Description. Let's see if it has resources. So if schema JSON contains key resources and this thing is actually an array resources dot uh, type is J token type I think J token type array and we start parsing it. I'll define the schema all the way at the end. So this is the name and the description. And here we define the resources. If that is the case, then do yield something. The end is name, description, and resources. Except that resources is not a list of units. So what we will do here is let resources basin is this thing. Yes, thank you. And for resource JSON in resources JSON do and this is the part where I actually try to parse a resource that parse resource takes a j object takes a resource JSON of j object and returns something that could be a resource. So what did we say that a resource has? It has a description, input properties, base component that uh, private read boolean thank you like this read boolean so that the resources Yeah, those were actually objects, right? So, so token of a string. Yeah, each resource, each resource was actually uh, resources was actually an object. It's not an array. Okay resources is not an array it's an object and then we enumerate this thing in resource json properties resource this is the part where uh, Ionite is failing me a bit here. Resource JSON dot oh, it's a J, J property. It has a prop party name, right? Mm -hmm. 
yes so the property name will be the type token and the value will be the actual yeah. resource type token is the name of the property which corresponds to this thing here and the value of the property is the object of the resource itself so it will be this thing this thing okay uh, resource the definition will be the value as an object i think we do need to check that the value is an object but it doesn't matter that much this is the resource definition and from here we can say parse parse these and here we can actually parse them wow this is not bad at all except that i don't really care about these things the resource has description is component empty 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 no text okay so uh, properties input properties and required inputs uh, are still to do just uh, for for the time being we just have these so let's see if we can do this so this is a list of resources uh, it wants the map here okay we can do that there you go so it wanted Resources is a list of map that goes from the resource type token to the resource definition, which in this case will be uh, the type token. Like it's a bit redundant because the re because the resources themselves have tokens, but I just want to make them available from both from both object models. So with that, that's our initial parser. Let's let's see how to use it. Uh, let's see how to use it. So. Uh, let uh, current working directory will be will be source directory schema path happens to be random JSON need a couple need a couple of open need this. Oh, it even knows this. Okay, follow me schema. Uh, why it's not working? It just needs a, just needs a little push. schema and then print f and the whole thing thank you copilot let's let's run it expected uh, is component to be a boolean uh, did i rely too much on copilot
so only when the value is a boolean in all other cases is false. token type string there we go well that is something um, it looks like it also reading the description is components also reading the description I don't like that uh, it's not very readable from here because the description has compiled examples for all supported languages that is not the nicest to work with but it is parsing I only need to parse the types now the input properties and the properties Parsing the input properties will be exactly like parsing the properties. Uh, let's private read string array. Well, I don't actually need that, I think. Private property is list of array no, not this if resource JSON yes close enough but I could also just go this thing to object string array there you go so now only input properties and properties input properties and properties which is a bit more complicated I think yes I definitely need to parse a type so if and this will be recursive I can do I can do that let recursive private yeah it should be possible If type JSON contains key type and okay, let's do it like this. If Type JSON type is string nicer like this. Yes, thank you very much. 
the array will be like element type items type item is this Yes, it doesn't compile, but that's okay. I oh, totally forgot about ref types. References. So when it doesn't, when it doesn't have a type, it should have. Yes, thank you. And type JSON. I don't have to check that ref is string, but that's okay. definition I'm really um, astonished that copilot understands F sharp that good so we need object definition uh, boolean description deprecated message These are mutually ex mutually recursive functions. So here we have type definition. I don't know why I have those as capital letters. Email type description deprecation message and secrets. this thing description deprecation message secret is secret read boolean type definition json yeah that looks good Maybe this should take a default, but for now it's okay. Secret. There you go. So number, string, number, integer, boolean, asset or archive, uh, JSON, what else? It's okay. Mm. Yeah, I need to handle maps too, but uh, give me a second for that. Yeah, this looks good. So object when type JSON contains key additional properties. So when not contains key additional properties, then it's an, it's actually an object. Otherwise, object then assume additional properties is type definition there you go no 
otherwise yeah I think assume is a type so this is just parse type not the not the type definition because once you have an object uh, I don't think you can say that the properties that the nested properties are are good at Yeah, when additional properties is here, then it's a normal type. When there is no additional properties, then we handle, then we handle to using the parse type definition. Why is it this not happy with it? Name value, parse type definition. Ah, it doesn't understand these things. There you go. And just for the sake of it, resources will be none. So that I can see the generated types more clearly. Yeah, that's more like it. And now let's parse their input properties and their properties. So we can parse a type definition. And now we know that each property and input property is like the name of the property goes to the type definition. So that should be that should be easy to do parser. See, so map of list, or is it just? Yeah, it's just a list like this. Okay. Well, that copilot just knows exactly what I want to do, so that's nice. It's exact same thing for. exact same thing for input properties let me double check what it is doing that looks good except that I could put this in a function probably Properties JSON, it will be a resource from this object.
parse time definition property then so parse properties properties you can take this away parse properties or the input properties Inputs, properties, and their descriptions, and everything. Let's give that a go. Not very light, too much again on the type. Yeah, it's the type is not always. is the type definition itself. Yeah, GitHub Copilot is amazing. It gets you really far. You just have to uh, vet it correctly, see what it's doing. And I can see that we have really nice type definitions here. So here, for example, we have the random yo-yo ID as a token. Description is none for now because I don't want it to clutter this output. We have keepers, which is a map of JSON any. It has a description. It's not secret. It's not deprecated. Yeah, I need to figure out what JSON. Yeah, I guess this is any, which translates to object. I guess that could be the any type. But other than that, this looks pretty good. The descriptions are a bit weird here. They're adding a new line, uh, adding a new line. So maybe I can change that the description of the type or the option map trim and does that make it nicer without the new lines yes that looks much much nicer that is very nice so we have the resources here schema type are being parsed correctly we have somewhere array we do have math let's see if we have array of something oh there you go inputs with an array of string that is which type we're we talking about talking about the random shuffle That is a good start for today. Uh, I need to need to augment this with the any type. It was important that the parser was able to recursively parse the type definition and the type itself in one go. It doesn't have the greatest validation. It doesn't handle enums. I think I need to handle enums separately too. Uh, some type definitions also include their uh, default types, which I didn't include it here either. Oh yeah, and another thing I didn't include is the plainness of the type. So if I have a type that is not plain, um, that is plain, that is not plain, then it needs to be mapped with schema type output of something like this. If it's not plain, which makes me think I can do it right here now. So 
Uh, I need to do it everywhere, that's not fun. And I only need to do it at the top level. parsing because to be honest maybe I don't need to handle that later on and this way we know the plainness plainness of the type right from the get-go I mean, if it's not plain, then it's outputty. If it is plain, then it's just as is. Output of a string, output of a map of a reference. Yes, that makes more sense. Okay, so this was our head start. Let me reuse description. I don't think I need to anything with it here uh, same for is component required inputs is parsed correctly I hope yeah required inputs is length no don't do that This is gonna be it for today um, this was like we can dirty way to parse the schema uh, that is that is in here there's of course a lot more that we need to parse from the from the language specifics to the provider to the config to the functions like here for example there are language specific for c-sharp there's something called compatibility we'll deal with later how namespaces should be mapped like if you read a package called random in the schema then it should be the random namespace capital letter uh, package references and references i don't care too much about uh, the specifics of other languages here um, because ideally when we implement language support for .NET in .NET, we don't want to care too much about python unless the api is really nice to work with to generate python which i think it is the better than go anyways so um, but at first i won't care too much about those i will only care about this 
and the resources and the function invokes which are not in this schema but they they are in multiple schemas so that's a lot that we need to do but um, it's a good start for now able to parse a schema later on we can define a nice object model to uh, to generate against so in in the Pulumi code gen tooling we generate code by concatenating strings which isn't very nice so i'm hoping that i can build a small ast a c sharp ast um, with like a c sharp file and has a namespace and classes and class has a properties and and constructor and type and whatnot so i want to work against asts and leave the and leave the rendering specifics to a specialized function i don't want to uh, work directly against strings uh, but so far so good i think um, i think i'll call it a day for the time being it's I've been uh, streaming for an hour and something so tomorrow is the official start of the hackathon but i already had a head start here so i hope by uh, Thursday where we have our demos. I, sh I have something nice to show but for the time being I'm, I'm happy with the progress So thank you all for joining and I'll see you next time Have a great day